Coming up right now, there's an Ozempic dupe that costs just $5 at your local gas station, and Gen Zers are addicted. Also coming up, a university apologizes after mispronouncing names of graduates, the viral moment that made it to late night TV. And later, it's the latest on the former housewife Kim Zolak and her divorce from former NFL player Croy Bierman. Why the two are required to follow a closet schedule. <laughs> you heard him right, closet schedule. I mean, I got a shoe, shoe schedule. <laughs> Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. And I'm Matt Doolittle, the deluxe version of Mitch English, uh, who will be joining us a little <laughs> later right here version. on Daily Flash. <laughs> There is a restaurant in Tampa that recently made headlines for its garnish that it was providing on the plates. Well, if it's Tampa, Lord knows what it could be. Well, uh, they were garnishing their plates with a fern, a foxtail fern garnish that they were snipping from the back of the restaurant. Okay. Now, here's the problem. Uh, video surfaced, and the newspaper there got a tip. Video showed an employee snipping plants from the courtyard of the neighboring Pearl Apartments an area where dogs frequently go to the bathroom and where runoff water from the building's garage can seep into the soil. Tampa never disappoints, do they? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Now, this restaurant is part of a restaurant group, if I understand this correctly, that has received a lot of Michelin attention, which is like the, you know, super five-star restaurants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So somebody said, hey, I ate at this restaurant a few months ago, and it wasn't cheap. My bill for two people was $500. Well, the fertilizer isn't cheap. <laughs> I mean, look, they got to pay for the dogs. You're <laughs> pulling fern from a parking lot to garnish my $500 meal. I mean, you know, I heard about people having organic uh, gardens and stuff that they could go do that. But this, this guy's just being cheap with it. It's a little bit too the How, like, what do you do when you find that out? Do you call them up and go, hey, oh, I saw the thing. I want I want 60% back for my doo-doo garnish. Does it make you think twice about eating out? Like, I've gotten a little bit more sensitive to other people preparing my food, you know. Yeah, and, and I was, you know, when we were, we were overseas, it was always like, I don't know if they got the standards that the U.S. does. Yes. And we ate a lot of the cafes. It was all fine. But, yeah, you definitely have that, and you see a lot of places get busted. Also, places are just cutting corners because it costs so much to run a restaurant. Yeah. You're seeing so many of these yeah. independent ones, and we're even seeing like Red Lobsters are shutting down because they, they can't afford it. So he's like, just get it off the fern. We don't need to spend the the fancy stuff from the the you know from from the fair or the you yeah know, the, the, from the farmers from market. the farmers market. Just, yeah. just get it next door at the apartments. How, how much can a, a garnish of parsley really cost you though? And you know what the thing is with parsley? I usually don't even want it on my stuff. <laughs> I, I scrape it off. No green anywhere. No green. On the plate I don't want green that. on my burger. Get that off of there. I don't even want lettuce on it. <laughs> No need to shell out $1,000 a month for Ozempic. There is a gas station dupe that'll cost you just five bucks. Zin nicotine pouches are the trendy new weight loss hack favored by Gen Zers who refer to the powder as the poor man's shot. Zin has grown in popularity as an alternative to smoking or vaping. While the pouches don't require the user to smoke, the product comes with risks such as gum damage and health related issues associated with nicotine. Zin is said to contain more nicotine than a cigarette and nicotine is a no appetite suppressants. Oh, we know all the stuff that you get from a, a, a gas station is great. Ask Lamar Odom. That, that that ended great for him getting that stuff from a gas station. I mean, do we, like, this Ozempic thing is getting crazy with what yeah. people are trying to do to get around the cost of it. It's like, just go to the gym and watch what you eat. I, I, you right? It's that simple. It's, it it kind of is. You just drink more water. Do you think that part of it is people want to be a part of the trend? Like they want to say, oh, I'm taking Ozempic too kind of thing, or? It might be a trend. I mean, South Park's finally having their jabs at it this week, so I can't wait to good. see what they do. But yeah, I think it's a trend thing, and people are like, look, I'm on it, but they're seeing so many problems. Yes. And can you imagine the problems coming from the, the generic, generic, generic gas station version of this? Your eyes are just going to suck through the back of your head now. Nothing like a good gas station version of Ozempic. <laughs> yeah, those things always work well. Like, ask every trucker out there that that stuff. Well, also, too, it's one of those things where it's like, 
everybody will find a new form of nicotine one way or the other. Yeah. Whether it's vaping, whether it's a powdery substance, it seems like it just reinvents itself in a million different forms. Well, a lot of these cigarette companies have been trying to find ways around it. A lot of them yeah. are gearing up to be weed producers, quite frankly. Ah, They're repurposing yeah. all their stuff. But if they could find something to still suck a dollar out of that nicotine market, that tobacco market yeah. that's still out there, because they've put a lot into it. Yes. They're going to do it. Here, here's the thing with that, too. I just think to myself, Weed is just as bad as nicotine, and yet we seem to think, oh, it's okay, it's medical marijuana. It's one thing for the other. Liquor's bad, too, but you I can know. go to a liquor store next to a gun store next to a weed shop. Well, there was a point in time when cigarettes first became popular where doctors were prescribing them to, you know, yeah. to men and women, and now it's sort of like, well, medical marijuana isn't that bad. It's the same thing. You're ingesting smoke into your body. It could be if, if it's not worse. But if you vape it, it's healthier. Uh. <laughs> well, a presenter at a recent graduation for nursing students had trouble pronouncing the names of graduates <laughs> during the commencement ceremony sounds like me every day reading the proper. Take a look. Efuni Batista Santos. Jesiku Lynn Boer. Well, the university... That the odd delivery was a result of the phonetic spelling on the name cards. The host incorrectly pronounced several names like Jessica, Allison, Sarah, Louise, and Elizabeth. Many people <laughs> found it odd that the presenter needed help pronouncing Thomas correctly, even though the institution is named Thomas Jefferson University. Oh my god. The school gosh. did offer an apology for the mix-up. Even late night comedian Jimmy Fallon shared the clip on his show, claiming she did the impossible. She made a graduation entertaining. <laughs> John Oliver also ripped into it uh, last weekend also. I mean, that come on. like It's on the card and it says Thomas. Just say Thomas. And halfway through that, somebody had to reach over to her and go, Y'all right? Yeah. Y'all right? Do we need yeah. to call someone? Were you hitting the bottle on the way here? Now, I get that some people like their name pronounced a certain way, but Jessica is usually pretty standard, and I think I heard her say, Yesika. Yeah. And well, I was like, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's the way she likes to pronounce. But when you get through, like, the fourth one, and they're like, is yeah. someone messing with me? Like, I know some people, like, they, they, they want it said a certain way, or they yeah. drop an E off the end of their right, name. Right. It might be there. We, we get that a lot with some of the, the interviews we have to do. But you just go... After the third or fourth one, you gotta look over and go, do I sound, I don't, I don't, something's not right here. What is with graduations this year? Because it seems like they've done a f fiasco from start uh, it, to well, finish. Well, it's a circus with the protests going yeah. on, that, that whole that whole mess going on. I, I know mine was pretty basic when I graduated yeah. twice from UCF. It was like, it was just normal, get there, yeah. sit around for three hours. Walk and, across the stage, grab yeah. your diploma after yeah. you've spent, you know, thousands of dollars on this education. Yeah, 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 I'm still paying for it. Then uh, you go uh, celebrate with the family. Don't ask my wife if she's still paying back. But it, <laughs> And the other thing is it's the influencer uh, world, too, where people are trying to do pranks and gimmicks yes. and stuff when they get up there, and they're just turning it into a clown show because yeah. they want the clicks. Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman may still be under the same roof, but they are keeping their distance, including coordinating times they can each access their closet. Oh, bloody Nora. A judge laid out a very detailed plan that dictates when the estranged exes are allowed to use their shared closet inside of their Georgia home. The former Real Housewife of Atlanta star has been granted access to their master bedroom closet Monday through Friday, but only between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Now, as for Croy, he is strictly forbidden from entering entering their shared closet during those hours. This update comes almost seven months after a judge ordered them to occupy separate sides of their family home because of all the fighting. They were also given strict orders by the judge to stay out of each other's spaces unless given direct permission. This whole couple has just been a circus since the beginning when she was on the Housewives. Yeah. I know he used to get a lot of junk from the, the players in the NFL when he they were like, what are you doing mm -hmm. getting involved with all this? It was toxic from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to date someone. Sorry, babe, I dated someone before you. They used to watch that stuff religiously. And I'd watch that, those two go, what is going on here? What, what is the circus? And they got a bunch of kids, too. Well, and the other thing, too, is it's like, this is ridiculous. Like, with all the problems going on in the world yeah. today, you, you two are se living in separate sides of your mansion, mm. and you've got closet hours. And weren't they going broke? Weren't they all, like, weren't they yes! bankrupt? Let's maybe That's sell right. off some of those clothes? Like, you know, uh. hey, look, if, although... If it was my sneaker side of the yes. closet, I need I need visiting time with right. my children. Right. So there, I have there's to, a caveat. I have to put them to bed yeah. and snuggle with them. All right, Kendall Jenner has been spotted with her ex-boyfriend, Bad Bunny, mm -hmm. while attending his concert in good old Orlando, Florida. Less than two weeks after reconciliation rumors surfaced, a 28-year-old supermodel was spotted letting loose at one of the Puerto Rican rapper's recent shows. In a video, Kendall can be seen bobbing her head and dancing as the three-time Grammy winner performed. The Vogue cover girl attempted to blend in with the crowd as she spotted a black sweatshirt 
shirt with her hood up over her long brown locks, watching the show from the VIP section. The former couple split after less than a year of dating back in December. Previously, the exes reunited weeks after their breakup as they rang in the new year together with mutual friends in the Barbados. Okay. Uh, another Jenner just tearing apart. <laughs> it, I, why do they? Why do the famous people always have to like go back to each other? Like, why just go go find a normal person? I don't know. Is she bored? I guess. I, I don't know. Like, the, 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 you broke up. Go go your separate ways. Go find like a, you know one of the. Didn't Julia Roberts marry a camera guy that was on like the set of her she movie did. or something? She yeah. didn't go she with sure the celebrity did. thing. Yeah. Like, they always got to find something to ruin it. I don't know. That's a good question. And maybe she's just trying to <laughs> like. If she's trying to be incognito in a hoodie sweatshirt on the side. I mean, that is what all those kids only. <laughs> wear anymore as hoodies true. and it's 100 degrees in Orlando. <laughs> Stay with us. We're back right after this. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. You know, most people actually want to eat healthier, but they don't want to feel deprived. And no one wants uh, that I know actually likes the word diet altogether. So our next guest, Karina Kara, is actually a national board certified health and wellness coach as well as a culinary nutritionist. She says actually changing your mindset around food is actually the most important step in making better food chainas, uh, choices. Rather, Thank you so much, Corinna, for joining us for today. You say that a mindset is a very key to actually making positive changes around the food. Give us more details on this. Absolutely, and thank you so much for having Certainly. me here. Uh, yes, the mindset is a powerful thing to make any kind of changes uh, that actually stick. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we can make changes, but the big biggest question is, why can't I stick with that change? Yeah. So, and that's where the mindset comes in. It's, uh, you know, it's looking at food as your friend and not fighting it, uh, and also coming from a space of, um, you know, gratitude, like feeling good that you are eating healthy because it's making you feel good and not feeling deprived. So really shifting our way that we look at the foods that we are eating um, and really coming from a space of uh, learning and curiosity that this food is making me feel good. I feel good after having this food. I have a lot of energy yeah. and that helps that mindset really helps. I think also too, I think what most people, or at least for me, most people were like, wow, I've been sleeping really well lately because, you know, and you realize it's because you've been eating well. People don't even realize it's helping you 24 hours a day. It makes sense. Now, you say you have four easy tips that we can actually start doing right now and that actually are going to help us have that mindset. First says, you say mindful eating practices. Like what? Mindful eating practice uh, is uh, so important to help with that mindset uh, shift. You know, we are always getting to the next thing. That's how our lifestyles have become. We right. always have uh, something to get to. And we're always rushing and in between uh, grabbing uh, something to eat. So it's always, we are always on the rush. So we don't realize whether we're actually hungry or I have finished eating this, I'm actually full, uh, and, and just kind of helping yourself to identify those cues comes from mindful eating is, and mindful eating is just sitting down and giving yourself five minutes to just have a snack, a meal, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, just kind of, you know, giving yourself a distraction free space to, to eat your food. That, that you're concentrating on, you know, you're not concentrating on the food or whatever, but you are in your time. This is the, the period mm -hmm. where you eat. That makes sense to me. Uh, I think another thing is, uh, uh, you know, finding recipes that uh, maybe you're going to cook and where your creativity comes from. But that's your next tip is actually cook at home more often. And I can uh, understand that that way. But what does it bring on the outset of that by bringing it, uh, cooking at home? Well, I always say when you start cooking at home, uh, you know, uh, one thing that puts on weight is your wallet. Right. <laughs> you <start> saving, <laughs> yeah. right. You start saving a lot of money because it is expensive. A family of four eating out, um, you know, it gets expensive. And not to mention all the other additives that come with eating out. Now, now again, uh, uh, the argument could be that, you know, everybody needs a break. There's, we, we need uh, we don't have enough time to cook at home. So, again, like any other skills that we help in developing, what we want to do is just start to practice um, and give yourself some time to cook at home. So it could be just cooking a family meal together on a weekend or uh, picking a day in the week and saying, you know, this week on a Friday, I'm going to make a meal for myself at home. So it's not about cooking every day at home if there's no time, but it is at least setting that intention that out of a 
five day work week, maybe I can take out time one or two weeks in uh, one or two days in the evenings to cook something at home. And the more we start practicing that, mm -hmm. the better it'll get over a period of time. And it's fun. It's actually, and then it's, you're spending time with family too. So you think about that. There's a lot of benefits, you know, exponential mm -hmm. that can come out of all of that. Staying hydrated, your next step. I think this sometimes goes without saying, but how much water are we supposed to be drinking? Oh, there is no magic number. I always tell everybody there is no magic number. Uh, you know, there are uh, guidelines to have, uh, you know, certain amount of water every day. Uh, but I always encourage everybody to start from where they are. So, uh, you know, if I'm not drinking any water at all, for me, even having some, you know, two glasses of water in a day is a big win. So the first step to stay hydrated is to see and observe how much water we are actually drinking. Mm -hmm. And once we get to know that, and again, that's that mindset, you know, that we are trying to inculcate and be intentional about our consumption of water, then we start upping our limit from there. And it's all about how much I can handle in a day. A lot of them don't tend to consume a lot of water towards the night because then you're awake <laughs> and doing runs to the restroom at night, right? So it is your comfort spot of how much water you, you can handle, how much hydration you can handle. But the key is to stay hydrated. And one tip I do want to add here, a lot of them, you know, it's, it's funny when we talk about uh, staying hydrated, um, it's also a preference. Some of us like to sip water through a straw, a bottle, a glass. Um, you know, I mean. so it's also again, yeah, it's also again finding out, you know, what is a best way that I actually enjoy drinking okay. water. No, it's funny you so, say that I, because I'm I I realize this myself. I, I like a wide mouth glass. I, I I don't like sipping on a straw. I don't like going through the whatever. I like I I find myself drinking more that way. But it's funny you say that because I I discovered that. Just you know, basically recently. So neat. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Your your there final you your final tip it makes a lot of sense. We got only have about thirty seconds left, but plan and prep. Explain uh, obviously how much prepping should we do? Uh, the prepping all depends on how much we want to prep. Okay. Uh, again, and how much we can given our schedules, our time, and just giving our lifestyle. So you know, if we if we really shoot really high and and look at you know, there's just so much so much information out there. Um, you know, so we kind of feel overwhelmed. So just start small, start slow, pick one day, and then just plan your meals and prep them. I love that. And your planning shouldn't be, I'm going to go to McDonald's on this day and then Burger King. <laughs> Don't make that part of your plan. Make healthy eating. Not at all, uh, yes. Very good. Uh, cooking at home and healthy Yes, eating cook at home for plan. sure. If you want more information, check out nourishhealthyhabits.com. Thank you so much for joining us. More Daily Flash coming up right after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. Here's Fabian Marcano with this week's The Beat. Well, a new rising star today, Northwest, oldest daughter of Kanye and Kim Kardashian, has announced she is following her father's footsteps in the music industry with her debut album. That's right, you heard me right. She is only 10 years old, but her parents, being two of the most famous celebrities in the world, it's hard to stay away from the fame. North formed part of her dad's Vultures album in the song Talking featuring Ty Dolla Sign, which debuted at number 30 on the Hot 100 with 12 million US streams in just the first week. This makes her the youngest artist to ever appear on the chart. For many of us, regular people, that would be a huge first step at such a young age, but I can tell she wasn't afraid of the moment. North made revelation of her debut album during Vultures listening party in Phoenix when she hit the stage with Ye. North revealed she's working on her debut album, Elementary School Dropout. You won't believe it. Paying homage to her father's acclaimed 2004 album, College Dropout, one that I love, one that many do love. North's younger siblings, Chicago and Psalm, also joined her on the Footprint Center uh, stage in an adorable moment as they held hands and danced together to her Vultures song. It's likely that Ye will be heavily involved with the creative process for ESD. I wish my dad would put me on his album, but can't wait to hear how this project turns out. In honor of Justin Bieber's 30th birthday this month, the pop star had a new wax figure in his likeness unveiled by Madame Tussauds. That's right, the life-size Bieber statue, which is now on display at the Museums of Hollywood's location, includes several real-life details to match the musician like his neck tattoos and the same puffer jacket and outfit he wore in his 2021 music video for Peaches. 
very likely uh, and very nicely done as you can see also slightly creepy though how how real it looks it looks very real you got to look at that picture in other news Lil Wayne is set to join Drake on his it's all a blur tour and for all of us, I think it's very exciting to hear about that since Live Nation has officially confirmed that Lil Wayne will be gracing the stage alongside of Drake and Lil Durk as six select venues across the United States. Fans from coast to coast are buzzing with anticipation all over social media and ticket sales have only skyrocketed. Some of the tour dates and destinations include Sunrise, Florida. They also have Belmont Park, New York in March 29th, State College, Penn in Pennsylvania, March 31st, Newark, New Jersey, April 4th. So mark your calendars, grab your crew and secure those tickets because the It's All A Blur tour is about to redefine hip hop touring. I'm telling you right here on the B. Of course, Wayne joining the tour is big news, but imagine working on Drake's tour as the dog. I literally mean working in a costume for hours as a dog. But hey, I guess at least you get to fly on air Drake. It's pretty impressive. You got to look at the picture to be able to notice how hot it's probably been inside that costume for hours of acting like a dog. And I don't know how Drake takes it, but it, it, it must be an amazing thing to have some person that, that'll lay down for you literally on a stage for hours and the rumors are no more we have all been asking for it and now it is finally official future and metro boomin are dropping not one but two collab albums metro and futures we don't trust you album will arrive on march 22nd and then a second album will be released in april of the 12th stay ready and stay patient i have a feeling those are going to be worth the wait we Don't Trust You follows Metro's Heroes and Villains and Futures I Never Liked You, which both arrived in 2022. Some say these projects are a result of the rap's most fruitful partnership. Two albums worth of Metro's sinister cinematic soundscapes and Futures' irresistible demon vibe. It's not the first time Future released albums so close together. He did it back in 2017 when he dropped Future and then he released Hendrix a week later. Both albums debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 200 charts, making the rapper the first artist to release two chart-topping albums in consecutive weeks. However, this is also the longest time since Future has gone without dropping a project in his career. So this should be interesting. Also new in the world, we Canadian singer and producer Party Next Door teased his forthcoming album Party Next Door 4 on Instagram sharing a series of photos including him holding up four fingers with the caption being the number four. There's a mysterious aura surrounding Party Next Door as he's rarely spotted out, nor is he super active on social media. PND, he revealed that his relationships are the main reason why there's such a huge gap between his releases. In recent interview, he said he gets into relationships and then the music becomes second. And also mentioned he is taking a break from these dating relationships and focusing on his music projects. It's also been three years since Party's last project, Party Mobile, which featured Drake and Bad Bunny. So you best believe he surprised fans when he released his single, Resentment, not too long ago. According to writer Hernan Memo, PND's upcoming single, Real Woman, allows the Jamaican singer to lay his vocals over bright, twinkling synths, trap hi-hats, hi and a backing choir. As of right now, all we know is that PND4 is officially on the way. There's no official release date yet. There's no track list or even feature teases, but safe to say, Drake is definitely going to be a part of it. And with Party Active again, I, will sus I suspect more, de more details will come further. So keep on following us. That is the beat with me, Fabian Marcano. Don't forget, you can catch me on Daily Flash Latino. Check out dailyflashlatino.com and find your local listings and times. Thank you guys for listening. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. And I'm Matt Doolittle, the Timu version of Mitch English. He'll be here a little <laughs> later. Uh, so this this kind of hit home for me. I'm, I'm a little sad. Okay. Red Lobster is filing for bankruptcy, guys. The Cheddar Bay Biscuits may be on their way out. Oh, come on. Those lobsters will finally be released from those tanks. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, they just announced that uh, the, the uh, Orlando-based restaurant, Red Lobster, had to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Uh, they're saying it was some bad decisions. Some bad real estate stuff they got left over with when really? they were when they separated from Darden because oh. Darden kept the real estate. 
So they uh, ran up the rent on them, and uh, they're saying just the endless shrimp thing actually didn't work out too well for them, and that's that what so? really got them. Yes. The endless shrimp thing did them in. Endless shrimp did them in. I, I, and the, uh, Red Lobster's been an institution. They've been around forever. They closed the one that I used to go to as a kid up, yeah. up, up the street here. And I'm, I'm really sad to see it go. But it says something when people know you for your biscuits and you're a seafood restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> that's a valid point. I'll, I'll give you that. Those biscuits aren't good, though, They're by good. the way. Yeah. Uh, what's fascinating to me is when this thing all happened is that they were open on Mother's Day booming business and then monday doors were locked you no longer yeah. had a job i felt so bad it's for horrible. those employees it's like all of a sudden like and no one no one knew it was coming no one saw it coming you know i'm i'm assuming the employees oh yeah maybe they, they the had management no idea. did but and, these, and the location they closed that's that's right around here it's a pretty popular yes. one it's been there for I, I can remember it being there pretty much my whole life at least Gosh. almost 40 years and they're, they're just shutting them down and i think this is happening to a lot of restaurants we've got another chain that's from around here tijuana flats yes they're having to go through a restructuring a lot of these chains mm -hmm. are going, oh, we, we kind of kind of overdid it. Because, I, I mean, I, and again, it goes back to, like, the food was okay, but it was getting up there. Like, yes. we went to, my wife and I went to dinner there, I think about two or three months ago. Yeah. It was almost 100 bucks, and we didn't even, we, we don't drink a lot or anything, yeah. so you can't even throw that on there. So, I mean, if you got a red lobster around, you may want to run up there and get the last thing of biscuits <laughs> and put them in the freezer. <laughs> I, I wonder, too, like, how does their, because um, I know they sell that biscuit mix in mm -hmm. the grocery stores. Yep, at the Not Costco. that that's going to shut down the restaurant, yeah. but I think sometimes when you see that certain restaurants are now providing some of their specialties in the frozen section, mm -hmm. does that make you not want to go to that restaurant as much anymore? I think or? it's a taste that you want to bring it home, or even if you, you order, I mean, you could order a cup of clam chowder and say, hey, throw an extra thing of biscuits in there, you yes. know, it's something from that if you want it, it's that true. desperate. I think it's just people not going out to eat because the cost is going that, through the roof. I, I think, think it's I think it's that when you go there, you know it's kind of a standard, you know, yeah. mass produced food. It's not homemade. We I got I, for Mother's Day, I took my mom to a local place, yeah. seafood place. It's down the street. So you know, we weren't looking to go there. I don't I don't remember the last time we were like, let's go to Red Lobster. Yeah. The sad thing was the last time we were there though, they had one of those things where a girl was walking around taking your picture in the booth. And having you try to buy the photo no. as if you were at like Bubba Gump or something, really? we felt horrible for it. It was like a Tuesday night, and she's like, "There's like ten people in her." She's like, "You guys, know I felt oh. bad. I bought the picture. It's oh on our friend because I felt so bad for this girl. I'm like, oh. is this her gig, or is she a waitress that didn't have anything else to do? This or? must have been after Darden sold. Oh, yeah, this Lobster. was way after yeah. Darden sold because that was about ten years ago wow. when Darden sold them because they were just like, well, but Darden kept the real estate. Yeah, they sold it off to him. Well, no need to shell out a thousand dollars a month for Ozempic. There's a gas station dupe that cost you all. A Five bucks. Zen nicotine pouches are the trendy new weight loss hack favored by Gen Zers who uh, refer to the powder as the poor man's shot. That's always good. Zen has grown in popularity as an alternative to smoking or vaping. While the pouches don't require the user to smoke, the product comes with risks such as gum damage and health-related issues associated with nicotine. Zen is said to contain more nicotine than a cigarette, and nicotine is a known appetite suppressant. So that's what they're saying. These kids are taking it as a trend. I just don't know that I trust anything from a, a gas station. I barely trust their <laughs> bathrooms, let alone, I mean, unless it's Bucky's. I don't know. There's not, there's, oh, that's a good point. I, I trust it from a Bucky's, but I, I don't know. Uh, aside from Bucky's, would you eat a gas station hot dog? No, no. no I mean, they've see? done tests, and the 7-Eleven pizza kind of does some of the other chains and some taste yeah. tests. But I'm not buying, I don't buy my drugs at the gas station, like, unless it's Advil. <laughs> I was, I'm fascinated by all the little extras that they have at the checkout counter. It's like, what is well, in this They even stuff? got busted that the fireball that they offer isn't real fireball. Oh. It's like it's like some generic liquor thing. It's not actual fireball because they can't sell full-on booze at those places. Oh, like it's a wine-based yeah, fireball? Yeah, it's like a wine-based fireball or something. It's like your, your fireball is not even real fireball at the gas oh station. Oh, my gosh. All right, let us know what you think about the gas station Ozempic <laughs> known as Zin. Dailyflashshow.com is the website. Give us a shout out. We're back right after. Pick this. us up at a gas station. <laughs>back to Daily Flash. I am Matt Doolittle. Well, his name is legendary. He was a cop, a lawyer, and even a captain of a starship. He's William Shatner, and Doreen Taylor got a one-on-one -on -one with him. It's time to get on the scene with Doreen. William Shatner is a true pop culture icon, and he sat down with me today one-on-one -on -one to discuss his incredible career and so much more. Check it out. I did it, did it. I did it. You want Denny Crane to talk. When Denny Crane talks, E.F. Hutton listens. My presence alone, my presence is so powerful.
I don't even have to talk. Up to a minute ago, you were talking to me. Now you're talking to the resident. I've been called everything, but I won't be called negligent. There's a man out there. What? Look, look, he's crawling on... And I think it's going to be long, long time. I watched the old clips of you, and you know, the Twilight Zone, and of course, you know, Star Trek, but everything else that you've done, and... Yeah, my friend. And you've aged beautifully. You're like a fine wine. You keep going. Well, take a sip of me whenever you wish. Oh, you can you can take me on your journey of the universe. <laughs> you won two Emmys playing the same character at different times and on two different shows. Denny Crane. Oh. You've said your collaboration with David E. Kelly on those shows was perhaps the most you satisfying thing you've ever done. Why was that experience so meaningful to you? But David E. Kelly's a genius who won a know. Uh, an Emmy for comedy and Emmy for drama on the same year, and he wrote all the scripts. He's just a genius. So he wrote uh, uh, Boston Legal, and I got the feeling that David would be watching the rushes and watch, like he did with other actors, of course, what I was doing, and then write for me, write for that character in that way. And I just got the impression that I would perform, it was on camera, then that performance on camera would be sent to him, the film would be sent to him one way or another, and he would look at it and realize he could go further in his writing. And so we began a relationship. Elephants and termites. One giant, one so small. Congratulations on the recent release of your very first children's album, Where Will the Animals Sleep? I loved you created an album to get kids inspired to love and respect our environment and the creatures that are all around us. I've been intrigued for a long time, many years, about the interconnection of, uh, of nature, how everything is intertwined. And it's a children's album about the miracle of the intertwining of nature. It's perfect. Done in a great, fun, musical way. It's, it was a joy to do. We're going to do... We, the best compliment of all was the label. Cleopatra said, let's do another. Yeah, Dude. and you know, you're bringing this to children, too. And I love that you are getting them when they're young, when they need to know this information. It is released May 17th everywhere. Vinyl, CD, other formats, pretty much everything. Yep. And uh, you can get it uh, Cleopatra Records, which is cleorex.com. So I, I recommend it. I've listened. I love it. It's And it's such a wonderful way to get kids involved in what we is so important in this world right oh, now, wonderful. which is preserving what a, it. What a wonderful commendation that is. Thank you so much. I still cannot believe I got to sit down with the William Shatner. He is a true living legend. And if you want to hear the full interview, you can visit right here. And for now, I'm Doreen Taylor with The Scene with Doreen, here each and every week at The Daily Flash. See you next time. I love me some William Shatner. I actually got to sing to him at his 92nd birthday. I was at a convention in L.A., and they're like, I didn't know he was going to be there. And they're like, William Shatner? And he was selling NFTs, and I'm like, does William Shatner know what an NFT is? No, not. We're back right after this. During May, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is reminding veterans to prioritize their mental health. During May, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is reminding veterans to prioritize their mental health. VA wants vets to know that mental health treatment works and recovery is possible. This Mental Health Month, the Today I Am campaign, is showing veterans that they are not alone if they are experiencing mental health challenges and that with treatment, a better life is possible. VA offers many different kinds of help. Reaching out is the first step. On the Today I Am campaign website, veterans and their loved ones can explore the real and inspiring mental health care stories of their peers, learn about available resources, and see for themselves how support and treatment have allowed veterans like them to heal. To hear these veterans' stories, go to maketheconnection.net slash MHM. Father's Day is almost here, and we have the scoop on some unique handmade gifts for all the dads that might be on your list. Joining us now with some great gift ideas is lifestyle expert Megan Murphy. Hey there, Megan. 
Hi, thanks for having me. I am so excited to tell you about Maker Place by Michaels because it is the go-to online marketplace for handmade goods and unique gifts. Crafted by US-based makers and artisans, there are hundreds of thousands of treasures, customizable gifts, bespoke crafts, one-of-a-kind keepsakes. And when you shop Maker Place, you are supporting independent artists and sellers who get to keep more of what they earn. And I shopped Maker Place for you for my top six picks for Father's Day. Are you ready? We've got this personalized picnic blanket, $69.99. It is waterproof, it is sand resistant, and you can engrave dad's name right on that leather carrying strap. How fun is that? Any pickleball players out there? I love these personalized pickleball towels. The price is nice at $14.50. My husband needs a new wallet, so this is what he's getting. It is genuine leather, trifold wallet. You can put dad's name or initials right on there from $29. Nicest screwdrivers I have ever seen. They have wooden handles that you can personalize. This just makes me laugh. If dad can't fix it, we're all screwed. Flathead and Phillips head options, totally customizable from 20 to 29 bucks. And a little more punny business. I thought these spatulas were a riot. Best flipping dad, best flipping papa, $23.95. And for something a little bit more sentimental, you know, dad is sort of that guiding force in so many of our lives. And you can personalize these compasses with a heartfelt message for $59.99. So many fabulous gifts at Maker Place by Michaels. Go to michaels.com slash Maker Place and happy Father's Day to all you dads and father figures out there. After a natural disaster happens, insurance fraud seems to follow. Here's the president and CEO of the National Insurance Crime Bureau with advice on how to avoid these scams. The natural disasters and catastrophic events are more frequent and they're more severe. In 2023, we had $93 billion paid out by the insurance industry for claims associated with these disasters. We estimate 10% or approximately $10 billion is associated with insurance fraud. Right now, NICB responds to those, 18 of those events. NICB agents and analysts are on the ground to supplement state and local law enforcement. But before a national disaster strikes, you need to make sure your insurance policy is up to date. We've been in, a, within, in an inflationary environment. We need to make sure your coverages are higher enough for today's dollar, not four years ago. Be wary of contractors knocking on your door after an event. Always get three bids, working with your insurance carrier for vetted contractors. Never pay with cash, pay with check. You should expect to have about a 5% down payment with any contractor. If you do feel you've been a victim of fraud, there's more information on nacb.org, our website, where there's preparedness, as well as how to file a criminal complaint. Well, we're talking the latest and greatest must-haves as we transition into summer. Up next, our contributing lifestyle editor, Joanne Butler. Hey there, Joanne. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, as we transition into the warmer months, we're always thinking about feeling our best and moving our bodies more. And regular exercise is essential for not only how we feel physically, but mentally too. Exercise is just crucial to maintaining a healthy mind and body. And I'm really loving what Planet Fitness is offering is they're all about being the judgment-free zone and they truly are. They have a warm and welcoming environment that just makes it super convenient and easy to prioritize your well-being. They have certified fitness trainers that will help you set up a plan to achieve your goals. You get access to more than 2,500 locations across the U.S. and Canada. The memberships are affordable too, which is of course so important. And all clubs have brand name cardio and strength equipment, fully equipped locker rooms, flat screen TVs. And there's a free Planet Fitness app too that gives you access to hundreds of on-demand digital exercises from cardio to yoga, strength training, and even more. Just go right online to planetfitness.com or walk right into one of their clubs to sign up. You'll not only feel more energized and confident if you do it, but you know, you'll also be setting yourself up for a summer filled with positive vibes and just a sense of accomplishment, which is the best. Now, in addition to SPF hats and sunglasses, there's another beauty essential folks should have at the ready as we head into summer. New Band-Aid brand Pro Heal Adhesive Bandages. These are the latest from Band-Aid brand, the number one dermatologist recommended. 
They have a unique design to give you 60% better healing and help prevent the appearance of scars using this advanced hydrocolloid pad that creates the optimal environment for healing in as early as 48 hours. And it protects against dirt, oil, disease, and inflammation, helps minimize the formation of a scab, and actually helps restore your skin's barrier without need for uh, adding ointment, which is great. And they're just as comfortable as a traditional bandage and 100% waterproof, so you don't have to worry about your cuts and scrapes as you're running around this summer in and out of the water. Uh, and you can find Pro Heal at your favorite stores like Walmart, Target, and Amazon. Now, last but not least, let's talk great summer hair. This is the new herbal essences with pure plant essences, shampoo and conditioning collections with pure aloe, hand-picked leaf by leaf and carefully extracted to preserve its moisturizing and antioxidant properties. And Camilla oil, which is a really special lightweight oil that mimics those found in naturally healthy hair that just instantly absorbs. And the two together help really deeply nourish your hair while leaving it surprisingly lightweight. And you're just left with soft, flexible, nourished locks without the weigh down, which is great. What I love too about herbal essence Essences, there's something for whatever your hair needs, whether it's frizz control, moisture, curl definition, or color protection, and just the best high-end ingredients. These have hemp and apricot oil, honey, grapeseed extract, but they retail for just $9.99 each, so really a no-brainer, and you can find them pretty much anywhere. There you have it, my three must-haves as we head into summer. This is Tim. Tim is all about time. And if you've ever had a chance to look into Tim's cold, dead eyes, you'll see that it's time for you to follow us on social media. Sure, there's 10,000 social sites out there, and we don't have the time to name them all. Seriously, just ask Tim. So take the time to look for Daily Flash TV on your favorite social sites and start following us. That's all the time, Tim. Goodbye. All right, welcome back to Daily Flash. Uh, so I had a weird this? experience <laughs> that I had to share with you guys. This is nuts. Um, yeah. We have a security system at our house, a Blink security system, and we've got a camera on our back door gate. Well, we recently planted some beautiful bougainvillea trees in the back along our fence line just to kind of spruce things up. They've gotten a lot of attention because a couple of them are what they call a tricolor bougainvillea tree. So it's got like pink. Uh -huh. That means three colors. Yeah. Tri. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Anyway, one. pink, orange, and, and yellow. They're gorgeous, right? But um, you wouldn't think that anybody would go to the extent of digging it up and stealing it wow. in the middle of the night. So as I normally do, we live in an area with a lot of wildlife. I looked at the security camera footage, and I think we've got a clip of it here. Okay. There <laughs> is a neighbor walking <laughs> away there with goes. my bogan tree. Here we go. Right, there, it is. there it is. There it is. Clearly planned just, it. Straight up took it, and they knew where the camera was. Uh -huh. Where they're That's hiding crazy, it. That's crazy, man. Like, that is so crazy. And I'm not sure what she, I'm assuming it's a woman, she had in her right hand, but oh, clearly Oh, that's totally she, a Karen. That's I, a Karen. <laughs> that's a Karen if I've ever seen one in my she life. She dug it up. I couldn't believe it. We've got <laughs> pictures, I think, of what, you know, there's a hole in the ground now. And, and, then, and the hole was actually well dug. Well too. dug. I saw that too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So somebody had to bring a shovel to take it, right? Clearly be... pre planned. This was premeditated. I think we have the photos if we can show them here. If not, I'll just continue chatting about it. But normally I look at the security camera footage because we have a lot of wildlife in the neighborhood. And could have been a bear. That could have been a bear. Was that I a bear? I thought it, it was, was Yogi a, Bear. I well, Yogi it, Bear took your uh, tri colors. I thought it was like maybe a wildlife, a bear, like with trees or limbs on it. But uh, it's a na I'm Here's almost... what you have to worry about. Like, what are you going to do with that plant? Because yeah. if you drive by and see a tree, <laughs> that's my plant. That's my tree. That's my tree. That's my plant. Unbelievable. I just, I'm still flabbergasted. 11.30 at night, this person stuck by just and dug up the tree. We're watching, we're watching you. you. We got we you. All right. You. Don't I'll leave. You. Come back in uh, 24 Don't hours. Leave. Right. Thank nice. you. 23 hours. How about that? Y'all take care. And, and if you have her tree, bring it back. Bring it back. What's wrong with you? <laughs>